guys, welcome back to Linda's Pantry. Oh, I'm so excited. Today we get to start processing those apples. And actually, if the truth be known, I already started last night. Um, I was loaned a Pamper Chef apple peeler. I almost bought one months ago off of Amazon and I had it in my cart and shared it on Facebook and never did get it because I wasn't sure if I was going to get any apples or get enough to merit buying one. And so uh, now I have to have one. It makes this job fantastic. So in my crock pot, I've already got a batch of homemade apple butter that is done and ready to jar up. That's why I've got my canning stuff out. But we're also gonna can up some apple pie filling. And I'm using the Amish canning cookbook. This, for pie filling, they are spot on with their measurements and it comes out fantastic every single time. Every pie filling I've done with their guidelines comes out perfect. So we're gonna use um, their pie filling directions and recipe. And I might tweak the recipe a little bit, but you know, not much, not enough to change what happens. So while I'm waiting on my jars to finish in the dishwasher, and I'm gonna jar these up in, in 12 ounce jars, plus I will do a couple four ounce jars for my gift packs um, for the holidays. And then, and I'm gonna need more apple butter. I already know, I already have orders for it. So I'm going to go ahead and get all my apples ready for my pie filling. And then after that, I'm gonna go ahead and do up some more apples for another crock pot load. So that's what apples. I'm gonna do. And I'm telling you, this is so rewarding and I'm so very thankful. So I hope you guys love apples because oh my goodness, we are in the apple business <laughs> right now. Um, I also wanted to answer a couple questions. Some people ask about my container that my apples were in. That is an ice bucket. Um, and I bought that a few years back at Costco. It lives up on top of my refrigerator. And during the holidays or um, summer barbecues, I will fill that with ice and put the drinks in there. But it makes a great proce processing tub. I've used it for tomatoes. I've used it for when we process meat, you know, when we get an elk or a deer. I've used it for all kinds of things. So it's not just an ice bucket, but it is a very nice, heavy stainless steel ice bucket. So, and it's big. So let's go over to the table, see what I got going on, and sorry about the rambling. All right, guys, I'm just excited. I can't help it. Okay, so I've got everything set up on my dining room table. And what I did, because this um, clamps down on your table, and I could take it outside, but um, it's kind of warm out today, so I'm gonna keep it indoors. I took an old tablecloth, and it is doubled doubled over and I've got that at this end of the table. I don't want to mar my table. Um, this is the one I just refinished a few months back and so I don't want any marks on it. I've also got butcher paper on top of that to catch any spills and these apples are quite juicy so I'm kind of brave wearing white but uh, white washes. So I've got it clamped down. Now there's a little lever here and I don't know if you can see it from there very good but this is the portion if it's tightened into place it actually cores the apple and slices it. I don't want to slice these apples. I, I feel like there's a little bit of waste and my apple pie filling I don't want it in thin slices I want it in wedges like you would normally find or chunks. So you push down on this lever pull it back. These apples have been washed but because I'm going to make vinegar. Yes, I'm going to make apple cider vinegar, but it's going to be in a different video. Um, because I'm going to make vinegar, I'm going to rewash these. So all my, my um, skins are going to go in here and that and the cores and that's going to make our apple cider vinegar. So you slip your apple on here onto the prongs. And those of you that have one, you've already experienced how fun this is. <laughs> And it makes this job really, really fast and easy. And then you just start and it'll grab a hold of that apple and sometimes it won't. Okay, so what happened here is this apple is overly ripe in the center or has had some kind of issue going on because it's too soft to hold it. So let's see what we got in here. And yeah, it just has a little soft spot. I don't know if you can see that but it's got a little soft spot here and it wouldn't hold on to the spikes. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that away and get that. And I can hand peel this one. Now I've got a big bowl here 
on the table of acidulated water. And all that means is it's been acidified. Now I've got fruit fresh, but you could use lemon juice. You could even use vinegar if you wanted to. Citric acid, anything you might have. Lemon juice is probably the most economical way to go. Um, but, okay, so cut any icky, bad spots out of your apple. And you might have a few, especially when you're dealing with organic apples. These were not sprayed and I love it. So make those nice wedges you would for a pie. And let's set this one aside for a second so I can show you how to peel these. Okay, here's, now, uh, Sandy Smith, she said that these were not red delicious. Um, and they might, they, uh, I don't know if you guys know what these are, they're red. They're kind of a dusty red color um, all the way around. They taste like a red delicious to me and they have that texture to me, um, which that's just my taste buds, but, um, and then the other ones, like I said, taste like a Fuji. So again, you're gonna skewer that apple right on there. Go ahead and give it a little twirl. <laughs> And look at that. And I say, I said last night, and I'm going to say it again. This little gadget peels apples like my grandmother did. My grandmother could peel an apple or an orange, and it would all be in one piece. And that was with a paring knife. <laughs> it was great. I always admired that talent. So now we've got our apple. I'm going to go ahead and pull back here. And you just pull that off. And we've got a little bit of the peel at the top. I just peel that right off. And a little bit at the bottom. One little bad spot over here. And then I'm gonna go um, and kind of like I do peppers, cheek this apple around the core. Makes it very easy. And if you see any more core in there, you can pop that out. And there you go, into the acidulated water. So they don't turn brown, that's why you do that. And, oh my gosh, these are gonna be beautiful. Oh, who doesn't love a good apple pie? And I think I wanna make a caramel apple pie for my husband. He's actually off hunting for the first weekend of chucker hunting here in Nevada. And um, I, many of the western states and I promised him an apple pie or an apple crumble when he gets home at the end of the weekend. So he's looking forward to that. Again, there's a little bad spot. And you know, your pie filling, you wanna make it as pretty as possible. Try to make the pieces uniform and <clears throat> pretend you're gonna present it at the fair. So there you go, that's as easy as it is. When I get this big bowl, and uh, let me tell you, it's a big bowl full of apples, we're gonna go ahead and start our pie filling. But I think it's time to go jar up our apple butter, yum. And I promise you, I will bring you along for the apple butter recipe, okay? Um, okay guys, I have my crock pot right here and it, uh, we are ready to jar this up. The dishwasher did its task of sterilizing and this apple butter is beautiful. Oh my gosh, wait till you see how thick and beautiful this is, really rich. I mean, it's thick, it's perfect. And for the last half hour or so, I always take the lid off of my crock pot so any excess water can go ahead and evaporate off. We want this to go to a quarter of an inch of head space. Perfect. And we're gonna wipe the rim of our jar, just like we do any other canning uh, recipe. I've got my little handy dandy pan protector mitt. This just hugs perfectly these jelly jars. You need something a pint size or larger. It's hard to do the little ones, but. And then we're gonna put the rings on, fingertip tight, and in the canner it goes to wait for the rest of them. And I suspect I'm gonna get four or five, maybe six out of this batch, but like I said, I'm doing a bigger batch next time. Isn't that gorgeous? It's beautiful, and I'm telling you, um, let me do a taste test for you so you understand what 
exactly this tastes like. If you've never had apple butter, it's just such a great fall memory to have. And this is super hot, but see how beautiful that is? It's delicious. And it definitely passes the spoon test, the gel test. It's gone the length of time. And it's been in my crock pot on low since last night, and it's two o'clock in the afternoon. So we're ready to jar this up. And I like it this thick. I want it to be able to spread on toast. This is a great filling. If you make an apple spice cake, do a layer cake and put this in your layers or even um, put it inside the middle of a cupcake. Mm. You've got clove, allspice. I actually used a apple pie spice blend. I added extra cinnamon, clove, and nutmeg. It's delicious. I don't use any lemon juice in mine. Some people do. Um, I don't. I don't find it necessary. I don't even um, keep the apples from turning brown when I do this because they're gonna look at how rich and brown this apple butter turns from all the spices and everything else you've got going on. So that one is a little bit full for my liking. I want a quarter of an inch of headspace, not not up to the top and. And there we go. Okay, wipe that jar <clears throat> and put these in the canner. And when I pull them out, I'll bring you back and you can see how beautiful. These are gonna process for a 10 minutes. Then I'm gonna turn the canner off, take the lid off and let them rest in that canner for an additional five minutes to let the jars acclimate to the uh, temperature change. There's nothing worse than canning and having a jar break. Early on in my canning career, I'd have a bottom fall out and I couldn't figure it out. Well, looking back, I know exactly what it was. It was uh, temperature changed too fast and um, not making sure that your canner is about the same temperature as your jars and your product. So, in the canning. <gasps> okay, All guys, right. so I'm done. This um, apple butter is done and it made six. Um, 12 ounce jars plus this little four ounce jar that goes in my sampler packs for the holidays. I'll be doing, instead of them buying one 12 ounce jar, one kind of jelly, they'll be able to choose three different kinds or mix and match however they want for the same price. And I thought, you know, I think that would be a fun way to do it. I may have to charge a little bit more just because of the amount of jars, but I haven't calculated that yet. But it's beautiful. Oh my gosh. You guys, this is so exciting to me. <laughs> I hope that you guys like canning as much as I do. And if you're watching, you probably do. But this is beautiful apple butter. Absolutely beautiful. The jars are pinging. It's like music to my ears. And I love any time of year where you can get some canning done. And stock that pantry, which I will be stocking the pantry. Try not to tip your jars too much. I'm bad about that. It's not as important with jams and jellies as it is with pressure canned items. Pressure canning, when you bring it out of the canner, it's still under a lot of pressure and usually boiling in the jar and you can actually push food by tipping, push it right up underneath your seal and cause your jar not to have a good seal. It might seal, but it might not stay. So there you go. There's my apple butter and Stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll show you how to make apple butter. <laughs> it's so easy. Sorry, I'm doing the video backwards, but that's the end result. And it came out absolutely beautiful. I'm so happy with it. And so guys, I hope this inspires you to make some apple butter. Mm. All right, I'll show you how to do it. Just a second. So guys, I am, I'm done with apples today. Just let me tell you, it's quarter after five. I've done seven quarts of apple pie filling. I canned up the apple butter and now I'm on batch number two of apple butter and I'm supposed to go out to dinner. <laughs> so I'm tired. Anyways, <laughs> Okay, so I've got a heaping five quart crock pot full of apples that are cored and um, the skin's off. And I'm gonna pour down three cups of sugar. 
And I want to tell you that any of these ingredients can be interchanged, changed in amounts if you don't like stuff as sweet. I usually put four cups, but I think three cups will be plenty. These were the sweeter, or the majority of them were the sweeter apples. And so if I can find my measuring spoons, I'm gonna add my cinnamon, and I do two heaping tablespoons of cinnamon. Whoopsie. You can't have too much cinnamon with apple butter. I'm pretty sure. Not by that kind of accident anyway. Okay, and then I've got ground allspice, which allspice, if you're not familiar, allspice, where's my ingredients list? Is it gonna have it on there? No, of course not. Anyways, allspice is a combination of um, flavors, and I want one heaping teaspoon of allspice. There's a recipe on here for spiced nuts I might have to try. Ground clove. Now clove is very strong, but in this recipe, it's crucial to have a lot of clove. Nutmeg. Gotta have a lot of nut, oop, heaping teaspoons of each of those. And then the remainder of my pumpkin pie spice. And the reason I use this is because it's got the cardamom in it. Oh, and that is a tablespoon. So that's the extent of it. Now, tomorrow morning when I get up and I put the immersion blender to it, I'm gonna taste it. If I feel like I need sugar or any one of these spices, in addition to what's already in here, if I feel like I need it, I can add it then and wasmigate it right in and then let this simmer until it is done and I get the thickness that I like. Apple butter should be thick. You should also be able to do a jam test and that means you should be able to take a cold spoon, put a spoon in the freezer and let it get really cold, put a dollop of that down and run your finger through the center of it. If it falls together, it's not done yet. If it stays separated on the spoon, you're done and you're ready to put it in your canning jars and then you process it like I showed you. Anyways, guys, I know this backwards video is kind of hard to keep up with, but I hope it inspires you and I hope that you try this recipe. It is absolutely delicious and we love it and I can't wait to make a couple of things with it. I'm going to make a spice cake and I'm going to have it layered with this uh, apple butter in between. It's going to be delicious. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye. Don't forget to check the links. Oh, and look for more apple recipes because I've got another 30 pounds or so to go.